Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today, we have massive information dropping for the upcoming One Piece Stampede film in the form of the second teaser trailer. Now, usually I don't think that a teaser trailer is anything to be excited for. In fact, I didn't even make a video for the first one because, well, it was full of nothing. However, this is an entirely different case because every shot of this teaser is packed with information and we are going to go through it all in detail because we have some pretty exciting stuff coming. Before we start though, there is a link to the teaser in the description below and I highly recommend watching it before we launch into this. But for those of you who have already seen it, and I guess for those of you who don't care, let's begin breaking this baby down. All right, so one of the most exciting parts of the trailer for me is right at the beginning with a message from Oda that reads, I wouldn't let them make a movie like this if it didn't have a 20th anniversary in the title. I mean, of course, it's got to be a good time. And that is exactly the sort of thing I've been waiting for with Stampede. The Oda seal of approval is very important to me when it comes to these films. And the trailer even goes on to confirm that it will be an original story by him, and he is also the creative supervisor. And when we look at what Stampede will be examining, there's absolutely no way it could have been done otherwise. But before that though, we have a montage of new straw hat outfits. So now that we've seen three of these types of movies, I think that we can all recognize these as what I would call the adventure outfits. And what I mean by that is usually when we first meet the straw hats in these films, they'll be dressed in some sort of cool casual shipwear, but when the film kicks into gear and they start getting into the real meat of things and they dress for the occasion, which for this film looks like it's going to be a treasure hunt. So of course we commence with Luffy and he's got his much needed sack of provisions, as well as what looks like a large shield on his back and a hat covering. I'll say right here and now, this is not my favorite Luffy outfit by quite a stretch, but for the sake of adventure, you know, let's go with it. What I do love is that Luffy's bounty is now so massive that it's really difficult to fit the full number on the screen at any given time. Immediately moving on to Zoro and Sanji and they look fine enough, I I prefer Sanji's outfit to Zoro's just because it sparks adventure a bit more and it also retains a bit of Sanji's trademark flair with the stripy pants. However, I do enjoy the orange portions of what looks like Zoro's jumpsuit. So I do hope there's a bit more than that. And look, is that a hip flask in his pocket? Well, I guess everyone needs to be prepared for adventure in their own way. And of course, Sanji fans will absolutely love this shot because it is a direct comparison of the bounties following Whole Cake Island, with Sanji currently reigning supreme by 10,000 berries. A moment in time that will now be forever immortalized in film. And moving to Usopp, and he never did disappoints in the realm of fashion, going with bright yellow camouflage and what looks to be a hurriedly put together moose hat thing, you know, just so that he can blend in with his surroundings. But if he does get into trouble, he has the ever reliable Usopp hammer at hand. Chopper looks adorable as always, like a child ready for a day out. And he following in Usopp's footsteps has also adopted camouflage, but only for his hat. And it is still various shades of pink. And a nice compliment to the pink, he also has a bright aqua bag. Very great vivid color choices there. Maybe not so great for, you know, laying low and disappearing, but you can't ever go wrong with pink and aqua. The logo on Chopper's shirt also interests me quite a bit though, because it looks very reminiscent of Roger. So it may very well be the logo of the event they're participating in. Now, when I first saw Robin's outfit, I legitimately thought that she might be wearing her film gold casino dress just with a new long jacket thing. But looking back on it, they are very different, primarily in the area of breast exposure. I like this a lot though, it suits her very well, as does Nami's outfit actually. I'm loving the treasure hunting overalls and the leg slot for her climate act. But moving to my favorite straw hat outfit thus far, and it is Centurion Frankie. He just looks so damn cool and ready for action. Despite my love for One Piece, I don't buy a lot of figures and stuff, but I would buy Centurion Frankie in a heartbeat. And by his side is Mr. Brook, dressed like a classical archeologist with a nice monocle as well. Very classy, sir. But very sadly, once again, there is no Jinbei in this movie. At least not a Jinbei that has been revealed to us as of yet. It's all right though, I'm sure that one day he'll be recognized as the straw hat that he officially is. But the straw hats are far from the only ones participating in this event, as we also get a glimpse of Trafalgar Law making his first appearance in a One Piece film. There's not a lot to say about his design though, it's very classically Law-esque cool. I do wonder what the extent of his role in the film will be though. I'm really hoping that if we've gone to the effort to include him, that it's not going to be a Sabo style situation in Film Gold, where he may as well just not have been there at all for the minimal involvement he had. But we are also going for the full Punk Hazard reunion in Stampede because Smoker and Tashigi are also making a comeback. And this is fantastic because it looks like they'll be trying to infiltrate the event dressed as Punk pirates giving us a little glimpse of what might have been if they didn't have that pesky sense of justice. Tashigi looks simply amazing though, and she's definitely not pleased to be pretending to be a pirate at all. Of course, Smoker looks incredible as always. And once again, I'm hoping that these two are significantly more active in Stampede than say Rob Lucci in Film Gold. It doesn't stop there though, because ladies and gentlemen, may I present Buggy the Clown. 
in all of his post time skip glory. Now, when I first saw him pop up in the trailer, I thought that this was a bit random to have him of all characters involved in this. But given how heavily this film seems to be focusing on Roger, it actually makes a lot of sense given that he was a former member of the Roger Pirates. In any case, I could not be more excited for him and his entourage. I mean, more Mr. Three is never a bad thing and doesn't Kabaji look swish as hell in that top hat? All right, and after all of these design reveals, we are then told the general premise of the film, which is the Pirate Festival and apparently a hunt for Roger's treasure, whatever that is, given that it can't be the One Piece. And there is a little bit more information we have on this, which is a blurb from the official website. And I will now read the translation of that by the Library of O'Hara. The movie takes place during the Pirate Festival Expo, made by pirates, for pirates, where pirates all over the world, including some of its most infamous ones, join in for a big treasure hunt to find a lost treasure, this time of none other than Gold D. Roger. This battle will be so enormous that Marines, the Shichibukai, and the Revolutionary Army will get involved. This movie is set after Whole Cake Island in a non-canon setting where the Straw Hats are together, similarly to Gold. So I don't think it's an understatement to say that this setup is the largest scale film we've seen yet in terms of characters and just sheer ambition. With this in mind, you think that all the characters we've already gone over should in theory comprise only a small portion of what we're going to get in Stampede. But with that said, I don't want to get my hopes too high just yet because what that quote implies sounds like a world wide conflict, but I imagine it will be significantly less massive than that. I mean, just taking that last quote, this battle will be so enormous that pirates, the Marines, the Shichibukai, and the Revolutionary Army will get involved. Let's be real, that could imply that Smoker and Tashigi alone represent the Marines, while Buggy alone represents the Shichibukai. So yeah, I wouldn't get our hearts set on seeing multiple warlords or an entire legion of Marines just yet. What's going to be interesting though is seeing who represents the Revolutionaries in this event, because they're in a rather precarious position at the moment in the manga, quite purposefully shrouded in mystery just like Jinbei, which is why I'm assuming he isn't in this film or hasn't been revealed to be in it just yet. It might even be an original movie character who ends up being the presence of the Revolutionary Army, although I'm personally hoping that it might be the Commanders, because this movie should be out long after they're animated on TV, so that should be fine, maybe. In any case, as someone who works in the world of theater and live events, I love that the premise of this film is an expo. And that is made very, very clear in some really interesting blink and you'll miss it shots when we are bombarded with a bunch of sketches. For example, in this one, we can see the Jolly Roger of the Sun Pirates as well as the Red Haired Pirates, but there are at least two references to Whitebeard as well with the Moby Dick and his Bicento. Also, Mihawk's Yoru is there. So right now, this is legit looking like my dream convention. One of the other sketches also has what looks to be a replica of Roger's execution platform and even a make your own wanted poster booth. And it looks like I might've been right about the Chopper Run logo shirt being the Pirate Expo logo because it can be seen in another of the sketches. So it looks like Chopper went and bought some merchandise, which is understandable because he'd be so incredibly excited about this. But you know who's currently missing from this whole idea? Bartolomeo. I cannot imagine a world where the ultimate pirate fanboy misses out on an event like this. And furthermore, he'd surely be cosplaying as Luffy or one of the other Straw Hat members. There's just this comic potential here. But all of this madness has to be organized by someone and it looks like the antagonists of the film have been revealed. So starting with the less interesting one, we have the war instigator and master of festivities, Buena Festa. And at the moment he looks like a highly comical villain and I'd be surprised if he posed any major threat whatsoever. But the guy we're really looking out for here is Doug Douglas Bullet, a former member of the Roger Pirates and also referred to as the Demon Heir in the trailer. And that is just, wow. I'm very intrigued to see how Stampede is going to handle this because involving a former member of the Pirate King's crew is getting dangerously close to the world of canon. Although my money would be on Bullet being a crew member who was expelled from the Roger Pirates for one reason or another. And someone who may have some sort of grudge against them because of that. He's wearing what look to be Germa headphones, but they don't have a double six on them. So they may be unrelated. He is however, a highly decorated something or other, implying that he does belong to some sort of organization or perhaps even runs his own organization. So the plot thickens there. And it's also implied in a later shot that he's capable of using using Conqueror's Haki, although I think that's a pretty standard feature required to engage Luffy in combat these days. And the final thing we see before the title card is Luffy in Gear 4, standard bound man with no sign of Snake Man just yet, but I would bet a rather large sum of currency that Snake Man will be in this film. I just say that because film gold has already ended with bound man, so we have to do something different this time around. And wouldn't you know it, there's a new form of Gear 4 that has just been animated, so now everyone can enjoy it in movie form. And that is the teaser. This thing was only 30 seconds long and it gave us a dump truck of information. I couldn't believe what I was watching when I woke up to it really. As a result, I could not be more hyped. Although the sad fact is that we will still be waiting until at least the 9th of August, probably longer because that's the Japanese release date. I'm sure that it will have screenings in the US and I'm really, really hoping that it will have screenings in Australia as well like Film Gold did. If not, I've got to get to the nearest country that does. But that pretty much does it for teaser trailer two of One Piece Stampede. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces 
in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on One Piece Stampede. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.